Literally, our children and grandchildren's future may be riding on the shoulders of the world's mayors. Because you have to answer the how question. You do not have the luxury of just debating what are we going to do and how much money we're going to spend on it. You are judged by whether it works or not. And that is why I was so honored when I was asked to involve our climate change initiative in the work of the C40. I am, I might say, very grateful to the people who actually do that work. They're very gifted people. And I'm grateful that they do it. And I hope we are helpful. But we consider ourselves to be in the how business. Well, just before we came here, our host mayor and our leader and Rick Fadrizi of the U.S. Green Building Council joined me in an announcement focusing on 16 projects to be built in 13 of our member cities that will be climate positive. Let me say that again. Private developers have worked with their cities and with our climate change initiative and reached the point where they are confident that they can build major developments, either <clears throat> housing or mixed-use developments, that will generate more clean energy than they use through the most modern conservation efficiencies and the most modern production of clean energy and through alternative transportation means. Now, we believe that having, <clears throat> there are many buildings that have been built in the world that are now carbon neutral. Not, not enough to suit me, but quite a few, enough that most people are within airplane distance of, of an hour or so to go look at one of those. There are a few structures that are carbon positive. Uh, I recently toured the world's first carbon positive airplane hangar in Burbank, California. And they built it for $30 a square foot less than a traditional airplane hangar of the same size next door. But this is a whole development being pushed by people who do this for a living. That is, this is not a charitable effort. These people expect to make a profit. And to the best of our ability to determine it in the climate change initiative, the climate initiative, their technology is sound, their methodology is good, their access to supplies will be sufficient at the prices quoted. We think they're going to get this done. Now think what that will mean when whole developments are certified by the U.S. Green Building Council and others around the world as being climate positive, a net reduction in greenhouse gas emissions while you create wealth and improve the quality of life. I thank the property developers and the local governments that are involved in this. Individually, these projects are going to transform their communities. But collectively, they will set a new global benchmark that can change the world. First thing the mayor of London asked me today when I saw him is I said, I just came from London. I had to stop and do some work on some other projects. And he asked me if I had been to see the London site, which is going to be climate positive. This is the whole key to our future. These 16 projects in 13 of our member cities do the ultimate job of answering the how question. If we start building every new building at a minimum meeting platinum lead standards for the Building Council, if we were to change the incentives in every country so that more people would stampede to build all new buildings as carbon positive buildings, if in every city in the world that has traffic jams, there were incentives to immediately convert all the taxi fleets at least to hybrid electric vehicles, all I know is that 
In London and New York, it's, it would be almost like having 100% electric vehicles because you don't get into gasoline until you go over 25 miles an hour. And there's so much gridlock in both those cities that for 14 hours a day, that's no problem. Think about it. All these things answer the how question. I promise you, this may seem mundane to you. If the more we do these things, the more likely we are to get a good agreement at Copenhagen, the more likely we are to get a good bill out of the United States Congress, the more likely we are to go forward into the future with the United States and China and India on board, without which we are not going to succeed. And a generation from now, our children will ask us what in the wide world we were doing and why did we sit here and allow conditions to develop that then will require one or 200 million people to be relocated simply because we didn't do what was actually good economics today. So I say again, it's an honor for me to be here. I believe in all this policy change, I, I do. But I, I helped to do Kyoto and my own government wouldn't back me. And then, and they were good people. They just didn't believe it could be done. And then I watched Kyoto before my very eyes vanish in the doing in more than 145 countries. None of that has to happen anymore. We know so much more than we did. People are so much more committed than they were but there's still gotta be somebody out there on the front lines every single day answering the how question. That is the job of the cities, and we are honored to do our part to support you. Thank you very much.